Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we make space mining highly efficient. Today our goal is to mine only silver and magnesium. In order to do this, we gotta build a small vessel that will mine silver and magnesium, but not pick up all the stone. We don't need all that, it'd take forever to mine. Ahead of me is the silver. There's multiple silver deposits on this asteroid, which is good. One of them is on the inside on the left wall here. And I think the magnesium is somewhere behind me. If I can remember correctly, I don't see it on my screen yet. Might have to get out my drill. Oh, there it is. Without a drill on hand, it won't come up on your screen. This is kind of a tight fit, so we're going to have to be mindful when we build our mining ship. Knowing that we'll have to squeeze through this hole. You could use a large mining ship, but then you'd never get through the hole. Here I built a very basic platform with three refiners on it. For now, let's start out with just a simple small landing gear. Make sure that when you're placing the landing gear, you maneuver it enough to get lined up with the ship itself. You want it to be fairly flat. And then build. And if it doesn't turn green, you might have to go over and actually push down on it so it'll stick to your platform. Without gravity, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Now to start out, I'm going to use my basic but infamous circular pattern. This pattern I came up with a while ago on Microsoft Paint and is fairly easy to use and it has been very successful on a lot of different builds. It's simply five blocks on the side. Offset by one block. Two blocks up. If I can get it straightened out here. Then one block is your median. Another angle block. Two blocks, 90 degrees from the first two blocks. Oh, messed that one up. Two blocks, 90 degrees. And then we'll go back to five blocks on the side. And we just repeat this pattern until we reach the other side of the circle. Now this circle I've used in my UFO video, which was actually really convenient because it made the UFO very easy to control. Believe it or not, even though it was spinning, the centrifugal forces from it spinning made it even easier to maneuver. This shape always seems to come out to be the right size for most things that I do. I'm not sure how, but it does. You'll see what I mean later on when we add the drills to this thing. But when you're creating this circle initially, if you're going to use this pattern, you really want to start high enough off your platform so you don't have to crouch or you don't have to break the other blocks in order to reach it still. Otherwise, the lower blocks here, I ran into the issue where if I didn't have it tall enough, I would end up having to cut the blocks underneath the large blocks in order to reach it. There we go. Simple circle. You might recognize the color. I've used this color for the trim before on the Eagle 5 build, if you ever seen my RV. Inside of here, we're going to just make a cross-like pattern.
and these conveyors later on will be used to allow the drills to transfer whatever ore they have into the rest of the body of the ship. They're pretty easy to build, design, and don't take that many materials. There we go, looks kind of like a big tic-tac-toe board. Oh, don't need that yet. All right, from here, we're gonna build the driving part of the body first. I'm going to just put two conveyor blocks and then I'm gonna put a sorter block. This sorter block is going to allow or not allow any other materials to go from the fighter cockpit to the medium cargo containers to your connector. It's highly important that you follow which direction the arrow is pointing because that's the direction you want all the items to flow. So you can see that red arrow on the side of it and you want it pointing towards the cockpit. Later on, I'll show you how to indicate what you want to flow through it. And here's another port on the bottom of the fighter. You definitely want to make sure that's aligned or covered and connected to the main system. Otherwise, you know, you can always put one on the front here, but I always like to do the bottom one in case the front I want to cover up cosmetically. Then I'm throwing on a survival kit. It's not necessarily required to have a survival kit. I just put the survival kit if I'm in survival mode out of habit. That way, if I accidentally raise the top of my shield and I can't breathe because I forgot I'm in space, then I can go recharge my health on it. And believe me, that does happen. All right, so two cargo containers should be enough and then one connector. And you can see the ports on the bottom, so we just run these small conveyors all the way through. Looking pretty good so far. To power this, like the land-based tunnel miner, I'm just using small batteries and a few small nuclear reactors. Again, this drill head is so big that if you wanted to use hydrogen, you could. It might take a little bit more to connect the conveyors and stuff if you want to use hydrogen system. And you'll burn through more resources, of course, compared to using a small nuclear reactor. But sometimes you don't really have a choice if you're not that far in the game yet. Then we have three gyros, and three gyros is enough to accurately turn and maneuver this ship. It's not going to be that heavy until we actually get ore on it, but we're not going to max out the ore either because we only want silver and magnesium on this round. This is not necessarily required either. I just like putting a little bit of trim. That way we don't have some gaudy looking space miner just floating around. It's always better to have something more aesthetic looking when you're building because otherwise you get tired of your own designs. I think that's coming out pretty decent. Let's add some drills and see if we can balance out the look of this thing. Now on the drills, as you notice, I'm actually putting them, well, not that one, but I'm putting them one block off from the edge. On these drills, there's a center port. So if you're one block off, that center port, which is in the center of three blocks wide, then it'll adequately connect and feed your ore through it. But see how nice this circular design comes out? It gives us just the right amount of spaces between each drill that will cover the entire area, but they're not too close together. Now 
I will just fill in this back piece so we don't have debris that flies at us that misses the drill head. And that's most of it. Now that we have that all covered up, the next thing I'm going to do, if you want to turn this thing into a drone, you can. It's not a big deal. So in order to make it visible with a drone, I'm going to create this small inlet wall so we can mount a camera. Again, it's not a requirement. It's really just for convenience if you want to put a remote control on this thing. And with the cameras, always make sure the little dot is pointing downward. Okay, that's all the drills. Now this whole area kind of seems open. And aesthetically, or the way it looks, it's kind of just bare bones. So I'm just going to take a while and fill this all in so it doesn't look as terrible. We can kind of make it look more sleek, like uh, actual professional job here. I always try to show at least one part of what I'm building, but if there's multiple corners that I'm going to build, I'll show you one, and then it's kind of assumed that that's how I did the other points that are exactly the same. So you don't have to be bothered with watching it over and over and over on each corner. It's really a convenience to save you time, so you're not worried about it. Like on this corner, it's going to be repeated three more times because there's four corners. And it'd probably get boring if you were continuously watching me build the same thing. There we go. And that is done. forgot that it was supposed to be an angle. And there we have it. That's all four corners. For the most part, it's cut in. Now we just have to contour it to the front of the body. I don't think we need anything else mounted in here, per se. And that's about it for the front. I think it kind of looks better. You might be able to do a better job than me. I'm not necessarily an expert at design on here. Or at least the uh, non-functional design. If it's creative design, I don't really get into that. I just really get into functional design. Okay, what can I put on here next? We definitely need a way of propelling this. I don't know. Well, let me pick up these blocks first. I always have a mess around here. I don't know if anybody else runs into this, but I seem to miss my guide points and they just populate blocks in the middle of nowhere. It's like having a messy bedroom, you know, or a messy work area. So on here, I'm going to use three small ion drives, go pointing down and pointing up, 
and then pointing left and right, I'm going to use two. Since most of the weight is going to be in the back, we want to make sure we have enough ion drive power to maneuver these medium cargo containers and connector, because that's where all our ore is going to sit. And then I'm going to use two large ion drives to push ourselves forward. Later on, I'll show you how to set these up where you can basically set it to continuously push your vessel while you're mining without you having to really monitor it. That way, if you wanted to build a tunnel, you could. And then you could come back, you know, a few minutes later to see how far it's gotten. In space, with this many drill heads, you are going to be drilling a lot faster than, say, on the ground. Because there's no gravity to slow you down or to slow the material down. On the sides of this head, since the head is also quite a bit of weight, we're putting three ion thrusters per direction. So three on top, three on both sides, and three on the bottom. And then for reverse thrust, I'm just going to put some small ion drives between these drill heads. They shouldn't really be affected by the drill heads because there's plenty of space before you get to the head of the drill. But it'll help us feed backwards so we don't slam into the rock when we're actually approaching it. That looks about right. All right, let's disconnect this thing so I can do the bottom three. And then we'll be able to test this out. On a side note, I completely forgot that that small angle block was attached to the wall. And so the first time I move this, you'll see it float away. Looks like everything else is on here that we need. Maybe just some trim here and there, and we should be good to go. Oh, too far. You don't want to cover up your survival kit or it makes it pretty much useless. See, with the angle block, it goes right to the edge of it, but it doesn't cover up the screen, so it's still usable. We're going to do the same thing on this side. There you go. And maybe a few pieces in the back. Now, if you were doing this around an enemy, or if you wanted to mine and you know there was adversaries around, I'd probably use a heavy steel block set instead. That way they won't just take out your ion thrusters immediately. You never know when an enemy is going to show up. That looks like about everything on here. Now, let's just move this out of the way. 
Whenever I test a new ship, I always like to move whatever things could possibly go wrong with it out of the way. Well, besides the refiners behind us, but our plan is to go forward, not backwards. I'm just grouping the drills like I always do, step one. And then, if we go down to the small conveyor sorter, we can specify what we want it to toss out and what we want it to keep. So if you scroll down, there's a difference. There's a blacklist and there's a whitelist. The blacklist is basically everything that you want to discard and the, the whitelist is everything you want to keep. You can really put it either way, but you might have to change the direction of the conveyor sorter if you put it blacklist. Today we're going to put at whitelist and we're going to select the silver ore and then the magnesium ore because those are the only things that we want to pass through to our medium cargo containers. And that should do it. That's only going to allow silver and magnesium to go to our fighter cockpit and then our medium cargo containers and then eventually our connector so we can deposit it back at our refiners. Now I'll tell you ahead of time, I did make a mistake initially on here and I put these two ejectors on the back and if you do that, unfortunately they're after the conveyor sorter so it didn't really help me much to get rid of the stone but I'll show you where I move them to in a few minutes. It's always important to make sure that your ejectors are ahead of your conveyor sorter if you're using the white list option instead of the black list option when it comes to throwing items out. Otherwise, you can't eject the things that you don't want. It won't let them pass through. So it originally looked like it was all in line and matched up, but in reality, there was nothing going to them. However, on the ejectors, you do have this option to throw out and we want that selected. So that way it'll throw out everything that the conveyor sorter doesn't allow to go through. That means any stone or other debris that gets picked up by your drills will be chucked out the ejector. I do this just in case I have random debris. You know, spaceship parts or random other components that just happen to fall off or fall apart. Of course, I selected the ejectors to toggle them on and off. In the second slot and the third slot I have for my camera. Now, let's go find this ore. Looks like dead ahead is the silver. There was silver inside, but we're going to try this outer silver first, just so you can see how it functions and that we're only collecting silver. This is a pretty big head on this, so it shouldn't take us long to harvest the heck out of this silver deposit. I'm going to start on the edge here because I want to pick up some stone just to show you the difference between the silver and the stone and make sure that it's sorting correctly and we don't collect all that stone. So you can always see in the fighter cockpit that we had silver. And in the drills, we still have stone sitting in them. Unfortunately, the ejectors, like I had mentioned, are in the back past the small sorter, so they don't actually do anything. Realizing this, I'm going to go ahead and change these around and put them in the front. 
The easiest way I think to remember is to connect them directly to the external or side ports of the drills. So see how these yellow ports are extending outward. We want to do that, that way when it ejects, it'll push it away from the ship and we don't keep picking them up by the other drills. Four should do it. These will eject for all of the drills, not just the four that we connected them to. Now if we go to the ejectors and select the throw out, after we group them, of course, then you should see them behind the screen actually popping out. That is the stone that was sitting in the drill originally. But now we were able to successfully eject it, so all we're going to have in the ship is the silver for now. And you'll see as I'm drilling that it's going to continuously just pop out that stone. And it sends it far enough away from you where you're not picking it up and it's not getting in your way. But this does make it a lot faster, easier to maneuver, and a lot more efficient to mine ore on asteroids without having to build an entire rig. Building a stationary system is very difficult, and when you build one, you either have to put a lot of solar panels, or you're going to have to put some hydrogen generators, and then you need a bunch of ice for it, or you're going to have to waste your uranium. These small reactors are going to use a lot less uranium compared to a larger one on a larger grid. But as you can see, there's nothing in the ejectors, there's nothing anywhere else besides silver. And that's primarily in the fighter cockpit because it didn't fill up the cockpit yet. Okay, before we go do this magnesium, I think we're going to need some lights. I didn't realize how dark it would be. Note to self, add lights before going into a tunnel. Hmm, I think we can squeeze through here. It's going to be kind of a tight turn. I'm not sure if this was the original port that we went through the first time to see the magnesium, because now I don't really see it. I may have to get out and hunt for this. For future reference, I think if you add an ore detector, it might help out a lot, especially if the ore is right around the corner and you can't see it because you don't have the detection on. Oh, there it is. See? Hiding behind the wall. But with this miner, we don't even care. We're going to take out the entire wall and mine the magnesium because we're going to just pump out the stone anyways. It's only going to give us magnesium either way. That's the other convenient part of this ship. You don't have to worry if it's on the other side of the wall. You can bore to the magnesium itself and only mine the magnesium. So you know on some asteroids when it says, oh, the resource is approximately 30 meters from the surface... Well, you don't have to worry about collecting all that stone. It'll just shoot out either way. But in that case, you might want to aim your ejectors backwards away from you. So as you're digging through, you're going to not get a bunch of rubbish in your way. Because once you try to back out of a tunnel, you'd rather not have it on the sides where it's wedging you in. Now, as you can see, we are picking up quite a bit of magnesium, but for the most part, we're keeping that magnesium with us, and it's going into this fighter cockpit. Later on, it'll be in the medium cargo container, and so on and so forth. And I think I'm going to put some lights out here. Because going through a tunnel or inside of an asteroid is quite dark. And if I'm using third-person view, I can't really see how close my ship is to the walls.
There, that should be able to do it. Now I just have to adjust them. There we go. And as you can see, we've already gone through quite a bit of this wall, taking out the magnesium. If you want to propel this continuously forward, you have a thrust override on your two large thrusters. So I would put it about 1.5, 2.6 approximately. If you put it faster, I notice that it's going through a bit, but you might miss a lot of stuff or it could cause damage. So that's why I turn it back down to about two. And that's going to allow your drills to pick up most of the items, sort them, and eject all at the same time without getting bogged down or causing damage. And as you can see, I'm actually not pushing anything. It's just slowly pushing itself into the tunnel. You don't even really see the thrusters turning on because they're not going full bore or anything. They're just simply pushing very slightly forward. We're going to go ahead and group these together so we can put them in more of a control fashion. Instead of having to go to the K screen every time, you can group them together and have the same selection on your keyboard setup. Grab the large thruster and we're going to say increase thrust override. And then we're going to do a decrease thrust override. Now the increments on here are not going to be as great, but you can kind of play with it back and forth and still be able to perform the thrust forward, but it's going to be a little bit faster. Not too bad. It still shouldn't affect your ship, but as you can see, it will push you directly through. Now, if you still have your dampeners on, for the most part, the rest of your thrusters should keep you in a straight line. So you won't be going up or down or side to side. You'll just be going forward because you're overriding the front ion drives as well, but not the side, the top, or the bottom. And I think that's about it. Let's get this back over the refiners and see what we got. see how do I get back out of this thing almost forgot I had to turn my thrust override off or we couldn't move backwards this ship is pretty easy to maneuver since there are so many different integrated ion drives We were able to completely spin around, no problem, didn't hit anything. And then the two large ion thrusters on the back really get you moving at a good pace. As for a rating for maneuverability and power, I'd give this about a 6 out of 10. It's really not that bad. If you're trying to outrun an enemy, yeah, you might have a better chance. You could even run backwards and let them shoot your drills so they don't shoot your cockpit. Now, nice and easy, just gotta line this thing up. Takes me a while sometimes. You could also put another slot from your G window to activate or deactivate or lock or unlock your connector. Sometimes I do that just for the convenience if I'm going to make multiple trips. And there we have it. Pretty easy build. Allows you to only pick up the ores that you want and get rid of the rest through your ejectors. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope you leave your comments, tips, and tricks in the comments section below. 
I appreciate it. Now, how do you park this thing? I don't have a landing gear, so I can't really land it. 